Hello, I am Manchal Santa Maria Navarro, and I present you the work and calibrated image based visual point. This work has been done at Institute de Robotica Informatica Industrial in collaboration with Juan Andrade and it was presented at ICRA 13. Considering an autonomous robot with a monocular camera attached, usually it is expected to interact with the objects of the scene, such as tracking them, manipulating them, or something like that. Usually, this robot will work in a special environment, inaccessible for humans. That it is expected not only to be autonomous, but to be robust to unexpected changes. So the robot should be able to interact autonomously with the objects using the camera information robustly. This vision-based control is called visual servoing. In our case, we use uh, vision to drive an UAB to a desired pose with respect to a target object. Looking at the control loop scheme, the error is computed using the vision system feedback. Depending on how this error is computed, we can classify the visual servo in three main groups. The pose based that computes the error considering the poses, but uh, without ensuring that the object will remain in the camera field of view. The image based that computes the error using the image plane information without ensuring feasible poses to the robot and uh, hybrid approaches that combine both methods. In our case we use an image-based approach basically because our robot has a low-level attitude controller that it will only reach uh, feasible poses. The main goal of our image-based approach is to obtain camera velocities from the image plane information and specifically using an object feature detection. So the control law is based on the error between the current and the desired image features coordinates on the image plane. Basically to sum up, we are choosing a desired point of view and comparing it with the current one. This camera velocities can be obtained considering an exponential decoupling decrease of the error and combining it with the error derivative. However, we have to compute the so-called image Jacobian that relates the velocities from the image plane to the camera frame. In the image-based visual subboing, the resulting image Jacobian depends on a priori knowledge of camera intrinsic parameters. And to avoid this, we can optimize it while error in the image plane is being minimized. And here we present our uncalibrated image-based visual servo approach with a mal assumption such as squared pixel sizes, center principal point, and unknown focal length. Okay, so to introduce our image Jacobian, we have to briefly revisit the underlying method, the uncalibrated perspective and point camera pose determination, also known as uh, UPMP, to understand the formulation background. So, given a set of uh, 2D to 3D point correspondences, the UPMP method estimates the pose of the camera and the focal length. Assuming an object feature detectable, we compute the reference point corresponding to the barycentric coordinates of the object features. In this image, you can see these reference points both in the wall and in the camera frames, in orange and red, respectively, and how they are related to a specific uh, feature P. Each object feature can be expressed as a weighted sum of the reference point. So, 
Combining it with the perspective projection equations of the features, we can generate two equations for each feature. So now we have, uh, we have 12 unknowns corresponding to the 3D coordinates of each point in the camera frame and the unknown focal length. Rearranging all those perspective equations, such as m by x equal to zero, the solution of the system is in the null space of m transposed by m. In this uh, noise-free case, the dimension of the null space is one. Thus, we can formulate again the problem considering the eigenvector corresponding to the lowest eigenvalue. So, now the unknown is uh, beta. To solve it, we need to add more equations. Thus, we add the constraint to preserve the known distances between these reference points, both in the wall and in the camera frames. Finally, by substituting and rearranging, we can solve the system and find an estimation of the focal length. And this estimation allows us to formulate an image Jacobian without depending on the real focal length. So, going back to the visual servo problem, we are able to express the reference point with the UPMP estimations. And considering the velocity of each reference point on the camera frame, and by substituting them with the previous image projection equations, we get a system that involves the image Jacobian computed using the UPMP focal length estimation. Looking at the traditional image Jacobian, we can see how it strongly depends on the real focal length and how the uncalibrated image Jacobian does not. I will not go indeed on uh, this formulation of the Jacobian so, if you want more information, please check out the paper. Looking at the simulation of the approach with a free noise uh, condition and an initial and desired camera point of view, we can see how controlling the six degrees of freedom, both methods reach the goal. And also both methods with an exponentially decrease of the reprojection error in the image plane. But when an expected change in the focal length appears, such as 20% zoom, the traditional visual servo does not drive the robot to the desired position. At your left, you can see how the computed reference points of the target are seen in the image plane during the servoing task. And only the uncalibrated method which is the goal. In this case, the traditional approach never decreases the reprojection error to zero. All this formulation that we have seen is to calculate the six degrees of freedom of camera velocities, and in our case, we have tested it in simulation and experimentally in a quadrotor, which is an underactuated system with only four degrees of freedom. To do that we extracted the two non controllable degrees of freedom by reading the values from the IMO sensor. Also the feature object detector is assumed, thus we simplify the features detection by detecting a marker frame which correspond to the features object frame. Although in the next simulation you will see only the marker detection. What is really happening is the robot control is done using our uncalibrated image-based visual servo with uh, virtual features projections, only using the marker detection to position the virtual features in the wall scene. In these videos you can see a raw simulation and a real robot experiment both with the same task. For those not used to ROS, ROS means robotic operating system, and 
it is a software framework with a useful tools used with a robot. These two experiments were performed using an indoor localization system called Bicon, which uh, gives you the pose of the quadrotor in real time and performing the visual servo approach to control the quadrotor. More specifically, this task corresponds to drive the quadrotor to an initial position where the working area is detected as a primary target and once the quadrotor approaches to the base and the second marker is detected in a confident zone the quadrotor is anchored to the secondary target the secondary target is attached to the bar as you see now the real robot is anchored to the secondary target and finally, the robot is landed uh, using Vicon. Now you can see in this video a similar experiment, but without using uh, the Vicon localization system. Basically, the quad rotor is driven manually to an initial position in which we can assure the tag is detected. And using the uncalibrated visual servo control, the robot is driven to a hover position above the marker. Finally, the robot is landed manually. Let's see the experiment with the real robot again. The robot is driven manually, then switched on the automatic mode. The robot now is using the uncalibrated method to control itself and finally the robot is landed uh, manually. To conclude, we have presented a new uncalibrated visual servo approach where a new image Jacobian is derived, which is guaranteed by construction to be full rank. Also, our method is demonstrated both in MATLAB and with ROS, and you will find our code at this address. So, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have enjoyed this talk.